He may not have been a coach, but he was truly a leader. Henry Lowe spent four seasons immersed in the Villanova basketball culture, a journey that had the most thrilling and satisfying of endings. As a guy who wasn't a stud player to be on a team like that and have that experience, it's truly storybook. It's rare that a kid from Dalton, a small private school in New York, goes and plays on a Villanova on the number one team and ends up winning a national championship. I mean, it's rare, but I think I've been very lucky to along the way have all the people support me that I did. And I was lucky enough to have Coach Wright give me the opportunity and to be around our guys and to be part of the team that I was. I feel truly, truly privileged. Henry Lowe is just one of, of the great stories that you get to be a part of as a college coach. You watch him come in as a young guy, really thinking that I'm gonna come in as a walk on here. They don't think I'm that good, but I'm gonna prove that I'm, I'm better than anybody they have. Then there's gotta be a transition where you understand, okay, you, you are good and, and you're helpful to our team, but you're not gonna beat these guys out. But you gotta keep the same hunger to do that. Given the role that I had as a walk on on the team, you're sort of like a player coach to begin with. And that's sort of something you have to come to grips with the fact that you're not exactly a player anymore. You're not a stud. So you have to add value in other ways. You've gotta be really bright, really mature to do that, which Henry is. Be Become a leader on this team and be so immersed in the culture to say, like, I, I wanna teach this as a coach. Now I wanna be a coach. I'm still trying to convince him there are other things to do than coaching, but he loves it. You really have to eat, sleep, and breathe basketball to love it, and I think Coach Wright always jokes that we're all out of our minds. I think everyone in the program has that extra gear that uh, you don't really see. I think I'm definitely part of that. So are other grad assistants and everyone on our staff. Um, we're all crazy, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's well worth it to see our guys develop on the court and to see them play and represent Villanova in the way that they do. At one time, Lowe's primary role was to provide energy and inspiration through practice and game days. That meant a brief stint as part of the semi-famous bench mob but somewhere along the way, the focus turned more to the game itself and the people who were teaching him. Just being around Coach Wright and the staff, I saw that I had a lot of similarities to a Baker Dunleavy or Coach Wright. I loved the intensity of the career. I think that's something I loved when I was a player here and something I wasn't quite ready to give up as a part of my job. One of the unique things about coaching is there's, there's no official apprenticeship. There's no graduate school. You know, you, you can't go to school for it. You, you've got to be a part of a program where the head coach and all the assistants take responsibility in teaching the young guys the craft of coaching. For Henry, it was a quick and slightly awkward transformation from player to coach. To see somebody go down, you know, from being on the court with you and being in the locker room to immediately being in the, uh, the upstairs office, it's just, it's a little weird at times, it's a little weird. That transition was tough initially, I think, with our seniors now, the Josh, Chris, Daryl, and more fr we're friends, you know, so it's, it's an interesting, you have to really strategize in terms of how you're gonna communicate a certain lesson or how you're gonna talk about something. It's not, in my role now, I'm not the guy that's going to get on somebody or yell at them. It's more the behind the scenes, talking to them, having conversations, reinforcing our core values to them. Henry has always been someone who is professional. He's always been somebody that brought energy. He's always been somebody who's very on top of many different things. So it wasn't that much of a transition as far as how he dealt with, you know, when it's time to, to, to deal with business, his organization skills, you know, his, uh, his intangibles that he brings, and then the energy that he brings upstairs to the office and downstairs when he's on the court with us. First deuces face! Good job, Dylan! But there's one more major attribute that a coach in training has to have. You have to have a, a security in yourself to really be able to teach others. To get to that point where you say, hey, my value is not really what I can get out of this, but it's what I can give others. When, when, you, when you figure that out, you, you got, a, you, you got a, a special characteristic there. Coach Wright calls us people coaches. I want the best for all of our guys. I want to see them succeed and I'll do anything in my power to uh, help them get wherever they want to get. It's rare that you can spend all your waking minutes in a day trying to help another person and have that be your job and uh, feel fulfilled at the end of every day. And that's something that's important to me. Right now, fulfillment comes in modest tasks. We do a lot of rebounding and a lot of class checking. So, I mean, as a program that cares about a guy's academic success as much as their athletic success, 
We're making sure our guys are in class every day, making sure they're on time to those classes. And then in between classes, making sure they're in the gym, getting their 100 shots up and working them out and, and uh, developing them individually as players and as people. He's like almost kind of taking me under his wing because he's not really a coach, but he's not really a player. But he's like, he has like both, uh, the best of both worlds. And like he's always like giving me advice like from the player side. And then he's giving me advice like from the coach side too. He just brings like a lot of like wisdom go having gone through it uh, for the last four years. And now he's on the other side of things. He can bring like the best of both worlds. There's nothing I care more about than seeing those kids succeed. So the ability to just invest in them and use any skill or knowledge I have to give them, I think is what I love about it and what's gonna keep me around it because that's special. I don't think you get very many situations like that in other careers.